Welcome to part three of the Ultimate Beginner Spine Tutorial. Today, we're going to start rigging our character from the last video. There's a lot to cover about rigging, so for now, we're just going to be setting up our scene and getting some bones made for our character. Let's jump right in. The first thing to do is to import the art data. Go to Spine, Import Data, and find the JSON file. There's a few different options here, but let's just have it open a new file. Rename your skeleton here and Spine will open your art in a fresh new file. If you don't have a JSON, you can drag your images into Spine from the Tree Views Images folder. Just make sure your Spine file is targeting the correct images folder, then drag the images into your scene and build your character. Make sure your art is in the position you need it to be. You can use a reference image to make sure your art is all in the right place. I like to make mine green so I can see it easier. Some projects might need the root placed in the center, while others might need the root at the bottom. For this character, since she'll be running around, we'll be putting her root at the base of her feet. That way the root bone can follow the grand plane. Before anything else, save your project inside your project folder next to the images folder so they're all nice and happy together. Saving it here will give you the ability to move all your files together and the file structure will go with it. This makes sure that your files don't become unlinked by accident which can cause the dreaded missing images issue. This character has multiple views, which is a whole other can of worms I'm not going to go into right now. So for now, I'll just get rid of these and focus on the three quarter front view. And now we're ready to rig. But before we get started, let's go over some spine rigging basics. In spine, a rig is made up of four key parts, skeletons, bones, slots, and attachments. A skeleton is your entire rig and what houses all of your bones, slots, attachments, constraints, animations, and pretty much everything else in the tree view. You could have multiple skeletons in one file, but most of the time you'll only be working with one. Bones move your character and are what you'll use to animate. Sometimes bones will be affected by constraints to help automate parts of the animation, like having IK constraints on the legs or transform constraints. Slots are containers for attachments and are what gets attached to the bones. A slot can have a ton of attachments inside, but only one attachment can be visible at a time. Slots have a few key features, but are most important for controlling the draw order of your images. Then we have attachments. Most of the time, attachments are the images of your character, but they can also be conceptual, like paths, masks, or bounding boxes. Image attachments get weighted to the bones, and this lets them bend and move around. For now, we're just going to be focusing on bones, so let's learn how to make some. Select the Create tool and start drawing bones by clicking and dragging in the viewport. You can also click once to make a bone with no length. You can change the bone's length by using this crosshair numerically within the tree view, or my favorite, by selecting the bone with the Create tool, holding the Alt key, and redrawing the bone. Do not adjust the length using the Scale tool. We want the scale on our bones to stay at 1 in setup mode. Otherwise, it could cause some weird animation issues later on. A bone's length is really just cosmetic, and a bone with zero length technically works the same as a long bone. But there are some cases where the bone length matters, like with IK constraints or auto weighting. Not to mention, this is just easier to understand than this. When drawing multiple bones, each new bone becomes a child of the previously selected bone, shown in blue. If you want to have the child bone parented to a different bone, You'll need to select it first, then create your new bone. If you want more accuracy, you can also create a bone by choosing New Bone in the Tree Properties. The new bone will be created at the tip of the parent bone. If you made a bone and it's parented to the wrong bone, you can reparent that bone. Select the bone, then click Set Parent, and click the new parent bone. The first bone will then become a child of the second bone. In every skeleton, the hierarchy of bones starts with the root bone. This bone is basically the master bone of the entire skeleton and by default is set to 0, 0. Leave it there. It's bad practice to move or animate the root bone for a few reasons, but the biggest one is your programmer will hate you for it. It's helpful to hide it or make it unselectable so you don't accidentally move it. The root bone can have child bones, and those child bones can have their own child bones, and those can have more child bones, and so on and so on. Each bone comes with its own rotation, translation, scale, and shear properties, collectively known as the bone's transforms. And they will all transform based on the bone's pivot, which on a long bone is this little circle guy here, 
or at the center of a bone with no length. These transforms affect not only the bone itself, but also its child bones. For instance, when you translate an arm bone, the hand bone moves along with it, and same with the rotation and scale. If for some reason you don't want the child bone to rotate or scale with its parent bone, you can toggle inherit rotation and scale off in the tree view. This can be helpful for preventing feet from rotating with the legs to stay planted, or isolating scaling on a bone chain. But it's not the easiest to work with if you ever need to flip your character, so just keep that in mind. Considering the real skeletal structure of the character you're animating can help with planning out where to place bones, but it doesn't always have to be this way. Sometimes you'll want bones on things that don't even have bones in real life, like hair, cloth, or even wind. And depending on your animation needs, you might even find it easiest to use just one bone to control the whole thing. So let's decide how to rig our character. Since we don't want to move the root bone, I like to first create another bone to act as a master bone for the entire character and place it at zero, zero. That way, if I want to move the entire character at once, I can do so. The next bone is important because this will be the bone that controls the main motion of the character. But how do we know where to put it? The best place to start is going to be the spot that all other parts move from. So that might sound like in this case, we should start at the feet, since our feet are what moves us. But actually, we want to place the first bone right here at the pelvis. Let's simplify this a bit more. You can categorize most rigs into two types, starfish and trees. With a starfish, the center point is where all its limbs come from, so it makes sense to put the first bone at the center and have all the other bones come from there. Us bipedal folk are just like giant starfish. We've just got an extra long middle bit to work with and we wear clothes. On the other hand, sometimes you'll want a rig more like a tree. A tree starts at the ground and branches out into a bunch of different directions. The base stays rooted to the ground, while the farther you go up the tree, the more movement it has. It's important to point out that how you rig something isn't dependent on the art, but on your animation needs. For example, if you want this superhero to fly, it would make more sense to give her a starfish rig. But if you want her to dangle from the edge of a cliff, now it makes more sense to give her a tree rig starting from her hand. In all honesty though, most rigs are just a bunch of starfish and trees put together, so let's go back to our witch character to see this in action. We're going to give her a starfish rig to start with. We'll start our rig from the pelvis and branch out from there, considering the real skeleton of a bipedal to help us. Let's give her thigh, chin, and foot bones for each of her legs, then bones for the torso. Two is usually plenty, one for the waist and one for the chest. Next, we can make bones for the clavicles, biceps, forearms, and hands. Then we can make a neck bone and a head bone. It's important to put the head bone at the spot the head pivots from. If you put it too close to the center, it will feel disconnected when you rotate it. So think about your rig as if it's in 3D space to help place the bone. And this is a basic bipedal skeleton. We could stop here, but we have all these extra pieces to think about. So now we can start adding on tree rigs. The skirt dangles from the pelvis with the least motion at the top. So we'll make a branch for either side starting from the pelvis. The tail will also need a branch from the pelvis. For the hair, we can do branches that come from the head and travel to the tips of the hair. We don't need to add many bones to the pigtails. Four is usually plenty for something this long, but you could even get away with two. Make the first bones longer and the last bones shorter to give more flexible motion at the end. Then for the hat, we can add a slightly more complicated tree rig starting from the head. Create a trunk through the top of the hat and then add a couple branches for the sides of the hat. And now we have all our bones. We're almost done with the structure of our rig. We just have one final thing to do. At the moment, if we try to move the pelvis, the legs will go with it straight into the ground plane. If we were to try animating a walk cycle like this, we would have to counter animate the feet back into the correct spot every time we move the pelvis. Instead, we can add an IK constraint to each leg to help us animate. Constraints are a whole other topic to cover, so I won't go too much into how they work just yet, but for now, you can think of an IK constraint like putting a pin in something at the end of one or two bones to hold it in place. We want to have the feet stay in place while the pelvis moves. Select the thigh and shin bones, then go to New IK Constraint in the tree view. You'll be prompted to select a target bone. Instead of selecting an existing bone, we can click where the ankle is and it will make a new orange target bone. An IK constraint is created on the leg, which is indicated by the hollowed out bones. Now we can move the pelvis and the feet won't move. 
and the legs can now be controlled independently by the new target bones. The new target bones got parented to the root bone, so we'll want to drag these target bones underneath our master bone. That way, whenever we want to move our character as a whole, these bones will also go with it. Whew, that was a lot to cover, but we've made our bones and we're ready to finally attach them to the art. We'll save that for the next video though. So for now, let's do a quick recap of the most important bits. Import your art and set up the scene in Spine. Make sure your art is in the right spot and save the project. The four key parts of spine rigging are skeletons, bones, slots, and attachments. Skeletons are basically everything in the tree view. Bones move your guys around. Slots are just containers for attachments that are controlled by the bones. Attachments go inside slots and are usually images. Create bones using the Create tool. Click and drag for a long bone or click once for short. You've got tons of ways to change the length of bones, but scaling is not one of them. Don't move or animate the root bone unless you want to make your programmer mad. Bones have a hierarchy in a parent-child relationship, and they all lead back to the root bone. Transforming one bone transforms the next bone unless you turn these off. You can use real skeletons as a guide for building your rigs. Most rigs look like either starfish or trees, but are usually a combination of both. Bipedals are usually starfish rigs with long middles and a bunch of trees sticking out of them. Use IK constraints to keep the feet in place during animation and make animating walk cycles easier. And that's all you need to know for now about rigging bones and spine. If you want to take a closer look, you can download my project files for free in the link below. Next time, we'll start attaching the art to these bones. I'll see you then!